this Tuesday at 8, 7 central on The CW. Now at 10, residents return to their homes amid an uncertain future as firefighters battling the mountain fire prepare for more winds on the way. Outrage after racist texts are sent to black and Latino students. The latest on who is behind these messages of hate. They are illegal, untraceable, and linked to a surge in crime across the country. The battle over whether ghost guns should be regulated by the federal government. Honoring our heroes on this Veterans Day. Now on the News at 10. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. We begin with breaking news in South L.A. where three suspects are in custody following a dangerous high-speed pursuit. The driver gave up only after hitting a dead end. The pursuit of possible shooting suspects started just after 9 o'clock tonight on the streets of South L.A. Sky 5 was overhead as the driver behind the wheel of a smoking car was seen weaving dangerously through traffic, squeezing through intersections, narrowly missing several cars. The suspect and his Two passengers finally surrendered just before 9.30 after driving onto a dead-end street. Now to this. It has been six days since the mountain fire began ravaging Ventura County. Firefighters are making good progress in the battle to control the fire, but the winds are expected to kick up again. Meantime, residents who lost everything in the destructive blaze are returning to what's left of their homes amid an uncertain future. KTLA's Carlos Sacedo live in Camarillo Heights with the latest on the firefight and the recovery. Carlos? Michael Sher, good evening. Things still very eerie out here tonight as this entire area is still without power. Now, the latest number is 192 structures fully destroyed, including this home behind me. If there's any good news to report is containment. Containment is up, currently standing at 41%. Weather conditions also much more favorable than they were a week ago, so a positive outlook for fire crews. It's been almost a full week since entire neighborhoods from Moore Park to Camarillo were leveled in the fast-moving mountain fire. It seems like it's been weeks, but we're six days into it. Ventura County emergency officials say the worst is behind them as they are seeing a wind switch and have spent the last few days working to repopulate some areas while power companies restore electricity. The mountain fire we all feel comfortable is buttoned up. You may see flare-ups, you may see dust ups and you're going to feel a lot of ash and dust if you're downwind from this fire. But for those who lost everything, the pain is all too real. I was really a basket case yesterday and I'm I don't cry easily. Jim Lingle's home was one of almost 200 structures that went up in flames when the mountain fire ignited last Wednesday. He questions whether he could have fought harder to save his home had he stayed longer. He said you got to leave because this entire neighborhood is going to be burned down. And if you look here, the three houses on that side are fine. The three houses on that side are fine. For those whose property was salvaged, they're struggling to come to terms. There are mixed emotions. Why my house saved and somebody else's didn't. It's, it's heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. The only reason it's still here is just neighbors. Neighbors who were here who dug things out. They were just incredible people. and. The firefighters have been incredible. While crews work to provide disaster relief, some residents don't know if they have it in them to stay. Yeah, I want to rebuild. Um, we don't know if we can really do it. Now, there are still some zones in the area that are under evacuation orders, so residents aren't being allowed in at the moment. There will be another community meeting this Wednesday evening at Rancho Campana High School where officials will be discussing disaster relief efforts. But again, the good news tonight, containment is at 41%.
reporting live in Camarillo Heights, Carlos Salcedo, KTLA 5 News. That is promising. Thank you so much, Carlos. And KTLA is partnering with the Red Cross to help provide relief and support to those impacted by the mountain fire. If you'd like to donate, scan the QR code on your screen or go to redcross.org slash donate. All right, Vera is tracking conditions for us tonight. Vera. Thank you so much, Micah. Yes, as we go ahead and take a look at the mountain fire, map. Uh, this is Cap Maria. The winds right now are at about three miles per hour. The good news is if you look at the relative humidity value towards the corner there, it's at 88 percent, which is good. That's the influence of the onshore flow. And we felt a lot of that onshore flow. But now what we're concerned with, of course, is that the winds are going to begin to shift out of the northeast. Uh, luckily, they're not going to be super strong, but we do have a couple of wind advisories that will be with us until tomorrow. The winds right now are out of the northeast at three miles per hour. By the time we get to 3 a.m. It's still going to be about the same, but it will be a little bit stronger at 5. And then by the time we get to 8 a.m., they will increase a little bit. Now, it doesn't take a lot to pick up embers and to help spread them. So we're going to keep a really close eye on that. The winds are going to be a big part of the weather story as we work our way through Tuesday and into Wednesday. Uh, so we'll talk about the wind advisories, the details and the numbers in just a few minutes. Back to you guys for now. Vera, thank you. The investigation widens as more students report receiving racist text messages targeting black and Latino students. Local students began receiving a series of racist messages following last week's election. Kids across the country, here in L.A., the San Fernando Valley, and the Inland Empire, all were sent the hateful messages. KTLA's Mary Beth McDade is live in Hollywood with the latest on who may be behind them. MB? Yes, and Mike and Cher, I spoke with a tech expert who tells me that these culprits most likely use technology designed to help legitimate marketers target certain groups on their cell phones. It's really upsetting because I didn't think something like this would actually happen or they'd actually do this to people, especially students. From several SoCal communities, including Santa Monica to North Carolina, hate messages are popping up on cell phones. So she really came and just sat and handed the phone and said, Mom, look at this. And um, it made me sad. Black and Latino men, women, and mostly students throughout the country are receiving racist texts about slaves and picking cotton from unrecognized phone numbers in the wake of the presidential election. The question is who, not who did it, is who's going to take responsibility to address it. How does our incoming president begin to set an expectation of the type of government the type of country, the type of nation that we want to be. A Donald Trump spokesperson emphasized that his campaign has nothing to do with these messages. Meantime, this Santa Monica mom wonders how her three sons were targeted. How did they get his phone number? Um, what other information do they have? Tech experts say the culprit likely collected personal data by buying it online and then inputted it into algorithms to attain demographic info. Some messages appear to have been sent through text now, which allows people to sign up anonymously using an email address and send texts. And someone apparently attempted to use a similar company called TextBot. Both companies are now working with the FBI and other federal law enforcement. But at the end of the day, there's logs for all this activity. And the FBI is right now collecting those logs from the carriers and collecting them from the service providers. And those logs will absolutely determine the source. It's unclear if these messages originated in the U.S. 